All right, quickly, um, let's go into the business of today. Um, the emergence of sons. The emergence of sons. Now, the word emergence means the. It has several meanings. It depends on the emphasis of God for this season. So, the first perspective from which I want us to look at emergence is announcement. The announcement of sons. Remember when Jesus was baptized, there was an emergence at that spot. Are you there? The Spirit of God came down in form of a dove and said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. So, that announcement creates a kind of emergence. Now, emergence is announcement. Right there. But if you look at it again, it looks as though emergence is more than just announcement. Because emergence involves coming out. So, we can say emergence, you know, can lead to announcement. And after the announce, that announcement will now lead to coming out. So there is emergence, there is announcement, there is coming out. So announcement and coming out are the two things that, that happens in the process of emergence. Many things can emerge. Are you there? Many things can emerge because many things can come out. Many things can be, many things can be announced. But if the emergence is of sons, then <laughs> there are things to note. It can be emergence of demons. Are you there? Yes, anything can emerge. A season is coming when the Antichrist will emerge. And then, they are, but now they are already operating, but they are doing it secretly. But that, in that season, they will come out openly and they will let you know they are the Antichrist. That's a kind of emergence. But the emergence that we are looking at in this context is the emergence of sons. Sons of God. So the Bible says the earnest expectation of the creature awaits the manifestations of the sons of God. So if the sons will emerge, the question is why will they emerge? Number one, the first reason for the emergence is manifestation. Now, theologically speaking, we were made to understand that we were made to understand theologically speaking that between Malachi and Matthew, the gap between the two was about um, 400 years. The gap between the two was about 400 years. So, the gap between Malachi and Matthew was about 400 years, according to theology. Are you there? And for some of you, this thing I'm saying is not new because you have heard it before. Now, after this gap, suddenly, we, we had the book of Matthew. And if you see the book of Matthew, if you read downwards, you see, and the birth of Jesus was in this wise. Are you there? It will mean that during that 400 years of silence, you see, that 400 years is not really 400 years of silence as it is. It is 400 years of intense intercession. Are you there? What the Bible was explaining in the book of Romans 8.19 is a typology of what was happening between Malachi and Matthew. Between that space, oh my God, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now, between that space, Malachi and Matthew, the creature, they were made, to, they were made subject to vanity. They were in bondage. You know, at that point, at that point, the... the, the the, the the force of the devil on the on the creatures now increased. Are you there? The, 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 there were so many molestations from the devil. Are you there? The devil had a you know an upper hand in that season. So within that period of that four hundred years, the creature was made to sub they were, the creature was made subject to vanity. The creatures generally. It seems as though everybody were in darkness. Virtually everybody. But yet in that season, God had few remnants. 
And this remnant were subject to intercession. This thing I'm sharing with you now <laughs> is my own personal revelation. So you may need to pray to come into it. <laughs> so we are not emerging to, to just emerge. No. We are emerging to manifest because certain people have been waiting. And the reason we must emerge is because our emergence is going to be the answer to the prayers of those set of people. Let me give you an, let me give you an ex- example. The, the Israelites in Egypt, they prayed and then they were tired of their bondage, they were tired of their captivity. So they prayed to God. And when they prayed to God, God answered their prayers. And the way God answered their prayers was that he made Moses to emerge. The emergence of Moses was the answer to the prayer of that generation. So anytime the sons are emerging, their emergence is usually a response to a request that has been made by the creatures. If you continue reading that place, <clears throat> you see that the Bible is not saying the creature was made to sub- was made subject to vanity. Are you there? So our emergence is a response to a request. Our emergence is the answer to the prayers of a generation. So when you see sons imagine, God is answering a particular prayer. The emergence of Jesus, according to the scripture, was the answer to a particular prayer that, that was made. Let me share something with you. Now, you see, with, between Malachi and Matthew now, that thing that happened in that place was one of the things, not all of the things, but it was one of the things that the Bible was trying to explain in Romans 8.19. That period, the, the creature was subject to vanity. Are you there? The, it appears as though the devil had the, the greatest upper hand. Let me call it, let me use that phrase. Are you there? At that time. So what God did, now this thing I'm sharing, let me say it again. It is my own revelation from there. Are you there? This is what God showed me. Are you there? Uh, by revelation, I saw what happened between that space. So that's what I'm sharing with you now. Between Malachi and Matthew, that 400 years, about 400 years, there was extreme darkness. It appeared as though a generation of people had left God. Yeah, Jesus. Romans really captured what happened within that space. Most of the people existing that time, they could not, they could not retain God in their knowledge. You, what I'm saying now, you see it in the book of Matthew. So God gave them up to a reprobate mind. This thing happened between Malachi and Matthew. People were being born, they would just waste and go. We are being born, waste and go. We are being born, waste and go. It appears as though there is no future. It appears as though that the entire creation is going into oblivion because there's no light. The devil had an upper hand in that region, in that season. It was a rule of darkness, a rule of demonic kingdom. Are you getting what I'm saying? But in this season, so as I was saying, but the mercy of God, God was able to retain some remnants in this season, in that period. There were not many, there were just few. And these remnants were not outside, they were not they were not popular. So you you, you will not see them on the street preaching. Mm-mm. God were, was able to retain some remnants. So what were these remnants doing in this in that dark age? What they were doing was that they gave themselves to intercession. Are you there? Praying for the salvation of Israel. Are you there? They prayed for years. Some of them, they died in that intercession. And yet their eyes did not even see that salvation they were praying for. 
They train their children to continue this circle of intercession. They continue interceding. They continue interceding. Their children also died and did not even see the answer to what they are praying for. Those ones to train their children, those children to continue the intercession, continue their intercession, and died and did not even see the answer to what they are praying for. Those people to train their children, continue the intercession, until their 400 years was closed, that God now brought an answer to that cry of intercession. So the answer to that cry was the emergence of Jesus in the book of Matthew. So some people have so you see, the Jesus you saw in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the product of the seed of intercession that certain men had they have, you know, they are sown in a particular season. If the reason for emergence is manifestation, then the question will be, what are we to manifest? So before we even answer that question, I think we need to ask, what is manifestation? Manifestation is usually a revelation of something. When you say God manifest yourself, what you are saying is God reveal yourself. Because manifestation is from revelation to revelation. Just like uh, righteousness is from faith to faith. Manifestation is from revelation to revelation. So, if God manifests himself, what he does is that he reveals himself. So, the revelations of God is the manifestations of God. So, if God is revealing himself to you, he is manifesting himself to you. (laughs) <laughs> you get what I'm saying so we are going to emerge for the purpose of manifestation so what are we to manifest that's the question we need to answer urgently so Jesus emerged as an answer to the prayers of these people let me give you an example some of them remember I told you that they will pray and die and over the intercession will continue. Are you there? Some of these intercessors were privileged to be alive in the book of Matthew. So we had people like Anna, the prophetess. She was part of those people that the battle was handed over to. So that was why, oh my God. That was why when Anna was talking, when Jesus was brought into the temple, he was blessing the Lord that, you know, her eyes was was made to see the seed he there that thing they have been praying for a generation have prayed and died prayed and died prayed and died she was so happy that she could see jesus that joy came from this revelation are you there you can't imagine what happened between the 400 years it was a it was a a season of terror so the jesus you saw in the book of matthew luke and john Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was the answer to the prayer of this, this um, set of intercessors. They prayed Jesus to appear. Somebody is praying now. They have been praying for years. And it appears as though God has not answered their prayer. It's because God is preparing you. The day you will emerge is the day the answer of that their labors in prayers will walk to them in human form. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't forget, the first reason for emergence is manifestation. What we manifest as children of God is the will of God. So, as we begin to manifest, the will of God starts becoming visible, starts becoming clear, starts becoming clear. Are you there? So, manifestations of songs involves the songs manifesting the will of God. Are you with me? So, what is the will of God that we will now manifest? Because if you know that you are to, you are to manifest the will of God, you need to now understand what the will of God is. You see, manifestation is not necessarily in doing things that look supernatural. Because there are some supernatural things that are sponsored by demons. The devil can also heal the sick. The devil can, you know, uh, the devil can can raise the dead. Those things can be manipulated by, by demons. 
Are you there? But what you are manifesting will now define if you are truly of God or not. Let me give you an example. Why is it that the devil can also, you know, maybe some of some of you have asked this question before. And then you are wondering, why is it that people can use demonic powers to heal people? Why is it that all these fake ministers, eh, they, are, they are using, you know, all these false ministers, they are using demonic powers, yet they are healing the sick, the blind can see. Why? It's simple. Go to the book of John chapter 10. John 10, 10. For the thief does not come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Who is the thief? Satan. The thief there is the devil. Are you there? So when he comes and he steals the eyes of a man, that man will go blind. So when a dark man now comes and prays for the man and says, Receive your sight, you will see it now. Because the father of that man that is praying is the one that stole the eyes. So what he will do is just return the eyes that he stole. Have you seen the, the, the logic now? So now we even know why the devil is stealing. He's stealing so that he can glorify his sons. So if we come to a woman, make the woman barren, and provoke the woman to go to a native doctor. So the day the woman now goes to a native doctor, and then they give her some concussions, and say, and the woman is crying and crying, the native doctor will say, don't worry, let me talk to the oracles. Bring a goat, do this, do that. The woman will do all those things, do sacrifice, all those nonsense. And after that, she will conceive. She will rejoice, not knowing that those, that thing she is, think, she is rejoicing on is, a, is pure manipulation. The devil that stole the children has now just returned it. That's all. You see, the devil does not give things to people. Those testimonies you think you are you are getting by you know people get not you now because I believe you are you are sons you are children of light. Those testimonies people get when they go to the shrine when they go and do the, you know dark things. It's not like the devil is giving them anything. It's not giving them. It's just returning to them what is told. If you are sick, he stole your health. If you go to a native doctor, he will return the health. So you will feel like you are healed and you think the devil is powerful. No. He's just returned. That's why the devil keeps stealing from people. Because he wants to glorify his sons. He wants to glorify his servants. And there's no way he can glorify his servants if he is not stealing from people. So that's why the devil will give some people ulcer. Give them uh, cancer. Because he wants to glorify. He, will, he wants to push you to the point where you go to the shrine. The day you will get to the shrine, you will see that that thing will go. Because the one that stole it is waiting for you there. He just wants to glorify his son. So once you contact the shrine, he will, he, will, he will return what he stole. Are you seeing this logic? This is what the devil is doing. It's not like he's a very powerful person. Don't forget that. The will of God will be revealed as we manifest our sons. Your life cannot reveal the will of the Father if you are not manifesting. You have to manifest. And that which you are going to manifest is the will of God. So look at this. Your friend cannot know the will of God until you manifest. Because the revelation of the will of God is in our manifestations as sons of God. I hope somebody is, is catching this light now. The revelations of the will of God is in our manifestations as the sons of God. So if we claim that the generation is that people are not following God, you go and manifest now. It is as you manifest that they will now come into what it, what the will of God is. Are you with me? It was the manifestations of Jesus that brought us into the will of God. The manifestations of Jesus brought the apostles into the will of God. Such that even when Jesus left physically, they were still working in the will of God. Because Jesus manifested. So anytime we manifest our sons, are you there? We bring certain people into the will of God. They come into the will of God because we are manifesting. Having said all this, then we will now come back to manifestations as sons of God. Are you there? The reason... God also wants his sons to manifest. It's because he wants to be glorified. 
can you see that it appears like though the 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 goal between these two people is two personalities seems to be common the devil is stealing from people to glorify his sons right there and then oh my god and then god will want you to manifest so that you can glorify him similar things but because god is not a thief god does not have to steal not he cannot steal the, the tendency is not there so what we now manifest as the sons of god is the will of god the things that god wants to do in a generation will be revealed as we manifest as sons our manifestations as sons is now what we define the revelation of the will of god now this is it. this is the point the will of god will be revealed as we manifest as sons so maybe tomorrow i'm going to talk on um, the sonship are you there we we did not just we did not become a son by confession are you there we be, we 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 are sons by adoption you are not a son by confession you are a son by adoption are you there originally jesus was the only begotten of god as a matter of fact at the point of of baptism that time when john was baptizing was baptizing jesus if you check heaven what is written there is jesus the only begotten of God. At the point of baptism, when Jesus was being baptized by John the Baptist, God had only one son, and that son is Jesus. But when Jesus died, the, 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 the weight of the sacrifices of his blood on the cross now brought us into adoption. Are you there? <laughs> Hi, my time is running. So that's why I, I actually wanted to share this tomorrow. But now, when he died, the effect, the weight of his sacrifice brought us into adoption. So we are now the sons of God by adoption. Are you with me? So Jesus, who was originally the only begotten, now became the first begotten. Jesus, who was the only child of God, now became the firstborn because now God has given birth to many other people. So Jesus is now the firstborn. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the death of Jesus moved Jesus from being the only begotten to becoming the first begotten. Because through that sacrifice, God now you know, gave birth to many more. And you are a son by adoption. I hope you know what that means, adoption. So when Jesus was saying no one can come to the Father except through me, he's trying to say that. <laughs> Don't think you are smart when oh. <laughs> you are adopted sons. If you try to go to the Father when I'm not there, oh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why you cannot pray without using the name of Jesus. That is the name of... The, the identity of the firstborn must be invoked for you to gain acceptance. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, I need to end my teaching here. Please, let's create time for the word tomorrow. Please send me, let me know the time for my teaching tomorrow. Either let me know if it's one hour, one hour, 30 minutes, or two hours. Let me know so that we can prepare in that direction. And please, I want to beg every one of you, for those of you that follow tonight's teaching, please, I want to beg you, I want to give you an assignment. I pray tomorrow, if I remember, I'm going to ask you. Please pray for me. Either pray for me in your secret place, pray for me today before you sleep, pray for me tomorrow too. Are you there? so that we can all be blessed thank you so much for tonight god bless you hi jesus help us help us now becoming a son by adoption means that <laughs> it is not the father that actually <laughs> know you Mm-mm. it is the son that brought you to the father so because you are a son by adoption you will need to continually relate with the father through the first one <laughs> are you there that's why we pray in the name of jesus it's a way of relating with the father through the first one 
if we are not adopted, assuming we are not adopted sons of God, we don't even need to pray in the name of Jesus. No, we don't need to pray. We pray in the name of Jesus because we are adopted. So, anytime we are relating with God, God must be seen his firstborn. Otherwise, he will not count what we are doing to be serious. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, that's what it means to be a son by adoption. It was the firstborn that brought us. It's just like a child coming to the father and saying, Daddy, you know, I know you are very rich, but you see, this is my friend. This is my friend. You know, the parents are poor. They can't even afford to pay school fees. Please, Daddy. Daddy, please. Daddy, please. Please, Daddy. Please sponsor his education. Please. I want you to be paying his school fees. I want you to be feeding him. Just everything you are doing to me, please be doing to him. And the father now said, Well, you know, you are, you are a good child to me. You are a good child to me. Ah, no problem. Money is not an issue here. And the father now agreed to now sponsor that friend. You know what that means? It means that everything this child is enjoying, this new friend that the child brought now, we also enjoy. But he will enjoy as long as he continues to be a friend to the firstborn. The day the child comes and says, ah, Daddy, you know that boy, ah, he fought with me. Oh. He even said, ah, he almost killed me today. He, he has left me. The day that one now leaves the sun, that's the day the, hmm, the whole thing will end. The whole privilege will end because he has left that son. Are you there? That is the implication of adoption. That was what Jesus was trying to say when he said, No one can come to the Father except 